Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In the last video, we finished off our music service class here so that we can now worry about the connection to our actual view model and activities and fragments. Before we can actually write that service connection, I want to create two kind of utility classes or just very useful classes. On the one hand, resource class, maybe you know that, that is a class that is very useful for error handling and loading handling. So that, that is just a generic wrapper class that we can wrap around our objects and then just emit the values that we want to emit. So either a success status, error status, or loading status. And we will create a so-called event class, which you also maybe know both these classes are very common in Android and used by Google in many, many of their examples. So that event class will just help us to basically emit one time events, which is, for example, very useful when we want to show a snack bar according to such events. Because usually when we use live data in Android, then when we rotate our device, that live data will automatically emit again. And without this event class, that would mean that if we if there was once an error message and we rotate the device, that error message would show again. And that is, of course, nothing we want here. And for that, we will implement the event class. But if you don't get this right away, don't worry about that. Everything will get clear when we actually use that in practice. I want to start to go to our other package here and create a new Kotlin file or class called resource and select class here. And inside of the same file, I will also create an enum class, which will be called status. So that will just contain three different values that describe the status a resource can have. So on the one hand, that is success, error, and loading. So that loading status will be very helpful to just check when our media is actually loading so we can display the progress bar in our fragment or activity. Okay, so this resource class here will be a data class, a generic data class. So the generic type parameter is out of T. If you don't know what this out means, that is kind of a keyword in Kotlin we can use to also pass kind of the, the, the parent classes of this parameter we pass. So let's say we create a resource out of type number. So the, the T type here is of type number. And we know that integers, floats, doubles are all variables or objects in Kotlin that inherit from number. So what this out will allow us is that we can also pass for example, a resource of type integer to that, even though we specified that it is a number actually, a resource of number. You can find much more examples about that in the Kotlin documentation. I think you know Kotlin pretty well if you're watching this series, so I will just move on here. Anyway, so this resource here will take some parameters in the constructor. On the one hand, it will contain such a status class, such a status enum class instance here we have down there. So val status is of type status and import our status here or don't import that. We don't need to do that. And the second parameter will be the, the data that this resource holds. So val data is of type T and nullable. So later on, we will just wrap this resource around anything basically. So for example, around our list of songs that we loaded and then this data will just be the list of songs that we loaded so we have access to that in our fragment and activities and we will also have a val oops a val message so if something goes wrong we can attach a message to that which will be equal to a nullable string here okay now we will have a companion object here in which we will have three functions each function to just emit the the corresponding status here so we will actually see what that does. So first of all, a function that takes this type parameter t called success, and that takes the data as a parameter because in the success case, we don't need any message because we know that everything went well. And when we call that function, that will just emit a resource that we created above here. So just a new instance of this resource class and for the status, we pass status.success because we call this success function here. For the data, we pass the data we pass as a parameter. And for the message, we pass null because we don't have any message. 
And then we will have a function that also needs that type parameter t for error to just emit an error resource, which will take a message of type string. And this time this is not nullable because if we get an error, we also want to have the error message to just display that to the user. And optionally, we want to be able to also pass data. So there can be cases where an error occurs, but we still have some data to show. This won't be the case in this project here, but this is just a very general class that you can just reuse in all of your projects. And that's why this data is nullable here. And you could potentially pass a data object here for the error resource. So we set that equal to resource um, where we pass status dot error this time. We pass data for the data and the message for the message. And finally, the last function for the loading status, the loading resource. So function t loading, and this will take only the data again. So we could also already have data when we are loading something. For example, if you implement a caching mechanism, and then you could already have the data that comes from the cache while you load the data that comes from the remote data source. That's why we have that here. And that is equal to new resource status dot loading, we pass our data and null for the message. And that's already it for this resource class here. So later in our music service connection and in our view model, we can just check if the data was loaded correctly, or actually if the data starts loading, then we emit this loading function or actually this loading resource here. If an error occurred in that in whatever we wanted to do, actually, we can just emit such an error resource. And if everything went well, we emit this success resource. And in our fragment, we can just then check if the resource we got was a success status, error status, or loading status. And according to that, do what we need to do there. The next class we implement here is the so-called event class I talked about. That will be actually a little bit easier, probably. Also in the other package, new Kotlin file of class called event. Select class here. Uh, that will be an open class, so we could potentially inherit from that. That is also a very just general solution I show you here. In our case, we don't inherit from that, but you can just reuse that in all of your projects. That's why I just um, stick to the convention that Google gave us here, actually the version that Google gave us here. And this event class will also be out of T, so that will have a generic type, type parameter. And this will only take the data. So data, which is of type T, and this time it's not nullable. Because when we wrap an object around this event class, so later on we will just wrap our resource objects actually inside of these event objects, then we know that these resource objects are not null. So this does not need to be null here. Um, but this actually needs to be a private val. So we have access to that inside of this class. And in here, what we want to do is we want to have a boolean called has been handled, which is equal to false. And that is also private set. So what does that mean? As I said, with this event class, we only want to trigger events, specific events in our app a single time. So initially, this is false. So that means we will trigger the event. But once we triggered it, we will set this actually to true. And then afterwards, it just won't emit this event again and instead just emit null. That will just be very useful for the snack bars and error messages I talked about. And according to that, we now have a function a get content if not handled that will return a nullable type of T. So if the content has not been handled, so if we call this function the first time, we just get this data, so the content of this event object. And if we handle it at least once, this will simply return null here. So we check if, actually we can directly return if has been handled. So if we already handled the event, we will return null here. And if we didn't handle the event yet, we will set has been handled to true because now we handle that event and we return our data. And something the Google developers also include all the time is a function called peak content. If you sometimes need to get the data, even though it has already been handled, 
then this peak content function will just return that here. We won't need this in this project, but I still wanted to show you that. So you can just copy and paste this class here in all of your projects and use it. And that is already it for this video, weather short video. But in the next video, we will start to implement our service connection. It will get more exciting then. And I hope you stay tuned. If you like this video, hit the like button and comment what you think about this, what you learned new in this video. And I wish all of you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.